y'all happy holidays welcome or welcome back to my channel here at Erin Enchanted I'm so glad that you guys are here Today we're going to talk about some holiday and winter books that I personally want to read this December and January during the cozy seasons. A lot of these books I have not read yet. They are on my TBR, but I do have some books that I have read and would recommend for this season. So go ahead, get a cozy drink. I'm drinking a gingerbread hot chocolate that I made, which is so good by the way. All you really do is make hot chocolate and put some ginger in it and then like, bam gingerbread hot chocolate Ooh, it's hot mm. oh okay all right i'm gonna need to wait for a minute on that one all right so let's start out with holiday books so the first book i found at a used bookstore and i've seen this one everywhere but it is the holiday swap by maggie knox and it's a feel-good rom-com about twins Charlie and Cass. So one of the twins has a baking reality show out in LA and the other one will run and the other one runs the family bakery back in their mountainside town. I think they kind of like get tired of their lives and then end up switching places, probably some love interests. I feel like Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen need to make it a reappearance and make a Hallmark movie for this book and it would be so much fun. So the next book I have is also a romance, which is Lucy Scores, The Christmas Fix. I've heard really good things about Lucy Scores writing and I could not resist this cover, you guys. So this story is a grumpy sunshine romance trope. I do know that. So from what I understand about this book, there's been some type of natural disaster that has rocked this town and they have this annual Christmas. I don't know if it's a festival or something of that nature. <laughs> Anyways, so this home renovation reality TV star comes into town to try to save the day, but the grumpy town manager does not like it. And I think that maybe they get under each other's skin, but there's like some sexual tension. So I think this sounds really cute for the holiday season. Next up, we have A December to Remember by Jenny Bayless. This story follows three estranged sisters who come back to their hometown after their dad passes away. Y'all, so listen to this. Through hilarious goose chases, small town mishaps, and one heartwarming winter solstice celebration, love is in the air. If only the three sisters can let themselves grasp it. I'm excited that this doesn't seem to have like too much romance in it and is about like the sisterly family relationship. I just think this sounds really fun. So next up is a book I'm planning on listening to on audio because I believe it's on Spotify and that is The Matzo Ball by Jean Meltzer. So this story follows Rachel who's a nice Jewish girl but she has this secret from her family and that is that she loves Christmas and she's actually a Christmas romance novelist. Anyways, her publisher ends up wanting her to write a book on Hanukkah but she's really struggling with it because she has just always been drawn to Christmas. She ends up trying to find inspiration for her book by going to the matzah ball which is this music festival on the last night of Hanukkah and I think she ends up reconnecting with someone she knew growing up there's a little bit of romance. This book seems so cute and has themes of reconnecting with your heritage, which I love and I am here for it this holiday season. All right, next up is a book that I actually read on my Kindle back. I think I read it in October or November and I was like, oh, this would be perfect to read in December. And that is Apple Cider Slang by Julianne Lindsay. So this story follows Winnie who lives on her grandmother's apple orchard in Virginia and the farm is in financial distress. So she's trying to figure out a way to save the family farm. So they're gearing up for their first annual Christmas at the orchard and then a dead body is found on the premises and Winnie's grandmother is accused of murder. So Winnie's trying to clear her grandmother's name. There's a whole lot of drama. It's a cozy mystery. It's nothing crazy, but anyway, it would just be perfect to read for Christmas. And there's two more books in the series. I think that both maybe take place in the fall. So if you can read this one now, you can read the other ones maybe next fall. Next up, we have the YA reimagining of A Christmas Carol, and that is The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. Let me just read the back to you guys. On Christmas Eve five years ago, Holly was visited by three ghosts who showed her how selfish and spoiled she'd become. They tried to convince her to mend her ways. She didn't. And then she died. Now she's stuck working for the top secret company Project Scrooge as the latest ghost of Christmas past. 
So far, Holly's afterlife has been miserable, but this year Scrooge is about to change everything. This just sounds really fun, and I've never read A Christmas Carol, but I always love watching the movie, and this just seems like a really, really fun book, and hopefully very heartwarming. I'm hoping, obviously I don't know, I haven't read it yet, but that there's some type of change of heart. It's, it sounds like she's still a little Scrooge-like in her afterlife, so yeah, I'll be curious as to how this one turns out. All right, let's see if this drink has cooled down at all. Much better. Did not scald my tongue this time. Oh, so good. Highly recommend gingerbread hot chocolate. Y'all, Percy looks so cute right now. Hold on, let me just. Percy. There she is. Percy. I need to just not talk to her because she's going to come over here in a minute. <laughs> All right, this next book on my list, I actually read last Christmas, but I do recommend this if you want a Christmas mystery. The Christmas murder game is so much fun. Let me tell y'all, first of all, it's filled with like anagrams and like little puzzles. And I think anagrams and puzzles are so fun in my books. <laughs> That's why I have Myrtle. And I have a few other books like here that all have like puzzles within them. So anyway, I like that if you don't, that's okay, but you don't have to do the puzzles inside. So this book follows Lily. So this book follows Lily. Yeah, it follows Lily, you guys. <laughs> so this book follows Lily, who has not been back to her childhood home since her mother was killed 20 years before. She ends up receiving a letter from her aunt asking her to come back to the home for Christmas with the rest of her family to play the game of all games. Whoever wins the game, receives the home, which Lily doesn't really seem to care about, but her aunt promises her that she will find out who murdered her mother if she comes. There's 12 days of Christmas, 12 clues that they're given and like puzzles to figure out. I think I gave this four stars. Yeah, I think I gave this four stars last year. I thought it was really unique. I didn't quite expect the ending. So yeah, really fun Christmas read. So these next two Christmas theme books are in the same series and they're historical mysteries. And that is Murder Most Festive and Murder at the Theater Royale. I think they both take place in the 1920s or 1930s. Look at the covers. Okay, so Murder Most Festive takes place on Christmas Eve in 1938. And there's a family and friends who are staying at this large manor together. And then when they wake up on Christmas Day, one of the guests is murdered out in the snow. So I think this is kind of an Agatha Christie and then there were none type of book. I mean, somebody in the house did it. I don't think they're all dropping one by one, but it's definitely someone in the home and you're kind of trying to figure out who did it. And Murder at the Theater Royale, I know they're putting on some type of Christmas play and I think someone in the play dies or something like that. Catastrophe, however, strikes before opening night. Scrooge dies on stage, seemingly due to a heart attack, but the show must go on until that is an old rival of Chester's is murdered in a dressing room. Oh, this sounds really good. All right, y'all. This next book is maybe one of my favorite reads of the year. It is not necessarily Christmas themed. However, the story takes place in the weeks leading up to Christmas. And that is Homecoming by Kate Morton. Kate Morton is one of my favorite historical fiction authors and I loved her last book. So in the past timeline of this story, a family is found deceased on the side of a river on Christmas Eve and it haunts this town. And so in present day, we have someone who is looking into her past, is connected to the story and trying to figure out what happened on that day. This is a chunky read. It is not for the faint of heart. I think it's probably definitely over 500 pages. If you've read Kate Morton before, you know it's a slow burn. You know, it's just a slow burn. <laughs> so if you're looking something to just like speed through really quickly, this might not be the book for you, but I love her so much. Love her. All right, next up we have the book Christmas Presents by Lisa Unger. So in this story, we follow Madeline Miller, who is a bookstore owner in this small town. 
And she's also the only surviving victim of a convicted serial killer. So this true crime podcaster ends up coming to town, like digging up the story. And then another local girl goes missing and they're trying to figure out who did it. This is a novella. So if you're looking for like a short thriller for Christmas, this might be for you. It's still kind of long for a novella. I want to say it's around 200 pages, but the audiobook is only five or six hours long. And it might just be perfect for you if you want a cozy Christmas thriller. So you guys, this next one I'm super bummed because I'm not sure if I'm gonna get to it because it's a third book in a series, but it's a novella, but I haven't read the second book yet, so I don't think it's gonna happen. But if you tuned into my other videos, you know I love the Shady Hollow series. And there's a sweet novella called Evergreen Chase. So in this story, Vera Vixen is solving yet another crime, and this time the solstice tree has been stolen from the forest, and they're all trying to figure out who did it. Y'all, I really feel like I am on a mystery kick right now because the next book on my list is also a mystery. And that is The Ghost Who Came for Christmas by Bobby Holmes. This is a cozy Christmas mystery. It is not one that I have read, but it is on my list. And it's part of the Haunting Danielle series, which I have not read any of those books. Let me know if you have. I'd love to know what you think about them. So this is book number six in the series. And from what I understand, you can read these as standalones. It's Christmas time at Marlowe House Bed and Breakfast. And Danielle has a full house. When a woman stranded far from home shows up on the doorstep and begs for a room for the night, how can Danielle tell her the inn is full and turn her away? After all, it's almost Christmas. The woman makes quite an impression on the other guests, especially when she mysteriously disappears. Is it foul play or something supernatural? Yes, yes, yes. Oh! <laughs> Hey y'all, future editing Erin here. In the next 10 minutes of my video, we're completely staticky because I dropped whatever I dropped, I can't even remember, <laughs> onto my microphone. So yeah, here we are. I don't want you to miss out on these books, so I'm just gonna refilm this part real quick for you guys. So next up we have the book Christmas Corpse by Katie Forrest, and this one is actually on Kindle Unlimited. This one looks so cute. It is a cozy mystery, and the only thing I know about it is that our protagonist's name is Holly. It's set in Candy Cane Hollow, and when a dead body shows up, the main suspect is Mrs. Claus. That is really all I need to know about this book. This next book can also be found on Kindle Unlimited, and that is A Court of Sugar and Spice by, I think it's Rebecca, F Rebecca. I'm not sure her last name, but this is a fantasy retelling of a nutcracker and it follows two sisters, Clara and Louisa, who accidentally bring a nutcracker to life and he turns out to be a fairy. They end up going to Fairyland with him and meet all sorts of characters like the Sugar Plum Fairy. Future Erin is actually reading this right now and it is pretty spicy. I am actually really enjoying it. It is fun for what it is and if you are looking for something like that this holiday season, this one might be for you. Let's jump into winter books. This first book I wanna recommend is actually part of a series and this entire series is perfect for winter. It actually got me out of quite the reading slump, I guess about two years ago. I think my brother and sister-in-law ended up gifting me this entire series for Christmas and I devoured them. And that is the Folk of Air series, which includes three books, The Cruel Prince, The Queen of Nothing, and A Wicked King. Just look at the cover for The Cruel Prince. I mean, it's so wintry. I mean, look at those trees with no leaves on it. It is just such a fun series. If you have not read it, and Percy is here. Percy, do you wanna say hi? Say hello to everybody. Say hi. Hi, say hi. <laughs> So this story follows Jude, and after she witnesses her parents' murder, she is whisked off to the land of Elfame, which is in Fairyland, and is raised by her parents' murderer. She always wants to fit in with the fairies. Listen, there is so much trickery and debauchery and fun in this book. Like, if you want to want to go to Fairyland, this, this series is top notch. And there's a new spinoff series, The Stolen Air. And actually the first book in The Stolen Air is a very wintry, very wintry indeed. So 
Yes, you love fairies and you haven't read this. I do not know what you are waiting for. Next up, we have The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, which is a historical fantasy novel. Although I will say is actually in the horror section at my local bookstore. I have heard that there are some disturbing scenes in this, so I would recommend checking out the trigger warnings, but I have not read this book yet. All I know about this is that it takes place in medieval Russia and it's based off a Russian fairy tale. And is there anything more wintry than Russia in the winter? <laughs> All right, y'all. Next up, we have A Winter's Promise by Christelle Dabos, and this is the first book in a four-part series. I am really excited to read this. I mean, first of all, look at the cover, and it's called A Winter's Promise, so definitely wintry. So I don't know a whole lot about this book, except I think there's a forced marriage. I know that in this world, everyone lives on these like floating islands. I'm pretty sure our girl Ophelia has some magical power. That's about all I know. That's what I'm gonna go into this one knowing. I have heard really wonderful things about this series, so I am so excited about it. Okay, our last few books are, I think, I think all middle grades. You cannot convince me that there's anything cozier than a middle grades book. I've heard about this book for a while and actually I was on Libby the other day. I saw that I had borrowed this book from my library like two or three years ago and I had just never read it. And that is Green Glass House by Kate Milford. First of all, this cover screams winter. I mean, what? Look how beautiful that is. So the only thing I know about this book is that there's a boy named Milo and he lives at this inn with, I think his father, but it's an inn for smugglers. And then there's all sorts of people who come to the inn. It's in winter time. I just think it looks really, really cute. So I'm excited to read this probably next month. Next up, we have Winter House by Ben Gutterson. And literally on the back of this, it says, if you're a fan of Green Glass House, you'll be a fan of this book. So yeah, I'm excited about this. All I know is there's an orphan named Elizabeth and she goes to live at this hotel and it ends up having a massive library. There's a magical book, there's puzzles. Again, I love anything with puzzles and riddles. So this sounds really, really fun. And it is also the first book in a trilogy. All right, this next book I'm really excited about. It is one that I haven't heard mentioned very often, and that is The Polar Bear Explorers Club by Alex Bell. There are six books in this series. When Stella joins the Polar Bear Explorers on an expedition to the Icelands, her eyes are open to a world of danger, adventure, and snow pirates. Out in the icy wilds, there are giant yetis, a magical golden geese, terrifying carnivorous <laughs> terrifying carnivorous cabbages and important new friendships to be made join the explorers on an unforgettable unforgettable adventure across the ice these sound so cute so I love reading seasonally. I just feel like it's a way that I can enchant my life, make it a little bit more magical and whimsical. I don't think all of these books are gonna last me throughout the winter. So if you have any suggestions of like wintry, icy, moody books, I would love to hear about them. I do have some other books that I didn't include here that are not wintry, but I am reading for some book clubs. So I do have some of those coming up, but yes, I would love your recommendations. Have you read any of the books that I talked about today? Did you like them? Did you not like them? Which one should I read first? Leave me a note down below. Let's chat, let's be book friends. My camera is about to die, so I really have got to go, but I had so much fun with you guys. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Happy holidays. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.